Hi, this is Corey from SAS Pegasus, and today I'm going to show how to deploy a Django application to any virtual private server using SAS Pegasus and Kamal. If you're not familiar, a virtual private server or VPS is basically just a VM virtual machine running in the cloud. Uh, they are completely platform agnostic, so you can get them from anywhere, DigitalOcean, Linode, uh, Amazon EC2, and so forth. And they can be a really uh, flexible and cost-effective way to host your production applications. So I'm going to use DigitalOcean today. Um, and DigitalOcean uh, virtual private servers are called droplets. And I am going to create a new droplet for my application. So let's put it in New York. We're going to run Ubuntu version 22 LTS. We'll just use our regular CPU. We'll do a two gigabyte option. We might be able to get away with a one gigabyte option, um, but I'll do two just so it's a little bit snappier. Um, we don't need to add volumes. Um, and then for a root password, let's see here. I'll just type something like that. And we're not gonna add any of these extras. Um, we'll give it the host name, Kamal Demo, I suppose. And we will create it. Don't need to update that. Okay, so DigitalOcean is going to crank away on that uh, bit of infrastructure. Um, and so this is us creating our server with uh, Linux and Docker installed. We're also going to need to set up a Docker registry. We're going to use Docker Hub for that. And we will uh, not bother with a domain name, actually. We're just going to use um, the IP address to start. So while this thing is running, looks like it finished, actually. So let's see first if we can SSH into it. So let's do SSH root at that IP address. And then we'll punch in our password. Try to type it properly this time. And we are in. Okay. So far, so good. So we'll just kind of run through these steps in order. Uh, so the first thing we're going to do is we are going to install Kamal. And um, I should update the docs, but this is going to happen on our dev environment. So I'm going to um, exit out of there, and then I'm just going to run this gem install command on my local machine. I should add that um, I've already installed Ruby here. So I'm not going to show the process of installing Ruby, uh, but there is uh, a link that you can follow there. Um, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a .m file in the deploy directory. So I will just copy the example file that ships there and have that ready to go. Next, we are going to prepare our machine. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to install Docker. So we're going to go to this installation page. And we are basically going to follow these instructions here. So we're going to run apt get updates. We're going to install these additional things. I don't always recommend just copy and pasting commands from the internet, but um, this is a throwaway server, number one. Number two, docs.docker.com is a pretty trustable website. So I'm going to go ahead and assume that this is relatively safe. I 
already. That can't run for a little while. While that is running, we could um, prepare our user account that we're going to use on our server. So uh, it looks like it's almost done actually. So we'll just wait for it. Okay. So we're gonna add a user for Kamal. Don't need any of that stuff. We're gonna add them to the Docker groups. And right, the next thing we want to do is we want to uh, add our SSH key to be able to log in as this user. Uh, we don't have any SSH keys on the server right now, so the first thing we're going to have to do is put one on, and then we can set up the login. So I'm going to exit out of here for a sec, and the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to SCP my own SSH key uh, to that server IP, which is this. While we're at it, we can maybe uh, also set it so that we can log in to root without a password. That will be convenient. Um, and so, yeah, I guess the first thing we want to do is we want to put this in. Uh, Let's just do it with Kamal first, actually. Looks good, so we'll make that directory. And now we're going to copy, let's see. We're gonna copy IDRSA to this value. And then we're gonna change the owner. Okay. And hopefully, if that works properly, we can now log in as Kamal with no password using our SSH key. Fingers crossed, and it worked. Alrighty. So, now we wanna prepare Docker for deployments. Um, I'm just gonna first just make sure that the Kamal user can run Docker commands. This is a good sort of best practice. That looks like that works well. Um, and so now we will uh, create the Docker network by following these steps. Um, this prefix is somewhat important in that the default config file that ships with Pegasus will use your Pegasus app ID there. Um, you can always change it in the config file, but I'm just gonna use the same thing so I don't have to modify that. Uh, we can skip this because we're not using S3. And lastly, we need to get rid of that. Oh, that's not gonna work because I think our Kamal user actually has pseudo powers, but we can rerun that as roots. Okay, cool. So far, so good. So once we have our server set up, the next thing we need to do is we need to set up a um, sort of a Docker image hosting thing a thing. We're gonna use Docker Hub for this, uh, although there are plenty of others that you can do. And oh, that's strange, oh, just slow, okay. So we're gonna to go to repositories and we're gonna create a new repository for this. We can call this, I don't know, maybe a Kamal demo. 
and uh, we're gonna make it private. They only give us one private repository, uh, but thankfully I'm not using this for anything. And that should do it. Um, we will also need to um, create a security token, which I guess we can go ahead and do now. So that should be under my accounts, security. You can see I've done this a few times. I'll make a new one, come all demo two. Generate. I don't mind showing this because uh, I'm just gonna delete it afterwards. Um, but And the place that we wanna put this is in our .n file. So I'm just gonna go ahead and stick that in for now so that we have that handy. Copy and close. Okay, so that should be all the sort of clicking around steps. Now we just have to finish updating our configuration files. So I'm gonna open this deploy.yaml file. And now we're gonna modify everything in here we need to modify. So the first thing we need to do is update the Docker image repository, which you can get from Docker Hub here. So back to the repository we just created, and it is this here. So czu slash come all demo. So we'll use that. I think that's the only place we need to put that. Yeah. Okay. You can see here, this is the um, network IDs and media folder IDs that I was talking about. So those have already matched up because we use the same name. Uh, so we need to fill in the IP addresses with our host name. So let's copy that and search for IP address. We can maybe do like a, oops. Replace that with there and there and there and there. Okay. And then host. So if you wanna set this up with uh, SSL and stuff, then you would use DNS endpoints there. Just for the sake of not making this video too long, I'll just use the uh, IP address to start. And then Docker registry username, Docker registry username, yeah. So this is just CZ, this is, uh, you get that from here as well. This is just your Docker Hub username. And your Let's Encrypt email, you shouldn't need to modify it, should pull that from your project config. And then in the .n file, we already set this registry password. So then the last thing we need to do is just send some, put some secrets in for Postgres password and secret key. Um, I'll just do that here. Uh, yeah, I've already run UUID gen a couple times, so I'll just grab those and do it here. So for maybe, for, that's not the right dot env. Okay, so for Postgres password, we'll use this first one. Maybe we'll prefix it with PG just for kicks. And this also needs to get copied into your database URL. Those two things need to match up. And then we'll use the second one for our secret key. Oops. SK prefix. Okay. Um, alrighty. So, fingers crossed, that should be everything we need to do. And now, now we just go into, we can exit out of our server. And so, in our deploy directory here, we can just run Kamal setup and see what happens. Now, this command will probably take a long time to run. Uh, so I will leave it here running and we can just kind of watch it do its thing. 
and if I didn't mess anything up, it will go ahead and uh, set up our Postgres on that VPS. It will set up Redis on that VPS. It will set up Trafic or maybe Traffic. I don't know how to pronounce that, but I'm going to say Trafic, uh, which is the web server on the VPS. And then it will build a Docker container for our Django application. Uh, and then push that to Docker Hub, pull it back down, and finally start up everything, including a Django process and a Celery process for background tasks. So here you can see it's now in the Docker building image phase. It's building our front end, our CSS files, things like that. Next, it'll do Python packages, and let's just let this run, and we will come back when it's done. Here it's pushing all the Docker images that it's built up to our Docker Hub registry. So it's finished pushing everything up, and now it's going to pull those images down from our production server. Now it's started everything up, and it's going to run some health checks to wait for the application to become healthy, which can take a little while. All right, looks like that finally came back healthy. And now it's gonna move on to the Celery container. And that one has succeeded, now it's just cleaning up. And it looks like it has finished in just about six minutes. And now as a final step, we should be able to copy this IP address, open it in a browser and Boom, our production app is live and ready to go. And we can create an account. And it works. So yeah, in just probably under 20 minutes, we have gone from completely nothing to a ready to go production Django application running on a brand new digital ocean droplet using Pegasus and Kamal. So I hope that's been useful and I will see you next time. Thanks for stopping by.